Microbes living in the soil and on plants, in the roots of plants, in the rhizosphere, so the soil next to the roots of plants, provide really important functions that promote plant health and development. This is because microbes and plants have co-evolved for millions of years and now have developed really critical beneficial relationships. The diverse communities of microbes living in soils and on plants really drive many beneficial agroecosystem functions, ranging from soil organic matter decomposition, uh, the cycling of nutrients, enhancing water and nutrient uptake by plants, uh, contributing to pest and pathogen control, and also activities directly related to plant production, development, and tolerance to abiotic stressors. Microbes also provide important plant growth promoting functions. These include improved nutrient and water access to plants, um, directly supporting plant growth and development, um, increasing the stress tolerance capabilities of plants. Stressors include high salinity, um, cold, heat stress, drought stress, Associations with beneficial microbes allow plants to survive and thrive in these stressful environments. And also disease suppression. Microbial communities are responsible for um, attacking potential pathogens as well as creating communities that are uh, robust and stable that prevents pathogens from entering and colonizing a plant. Soil microbes also carry out beneficial functions on larger scales related to the transfer of carbon between the terrestrial ecosystems, the soil, and the atmosphere. Um, by controlling the flux of greenhouse gases, including carbon dioxide and nitrous oxide, between these biospheres. So really important um, living creatures, organisms that are providing critical functions that support our ability to live on this planet. If it's a useful activity to plant health and crop production, microbes have probably already invented it. And because of this, this represents an immense market opportunity for agriculture biotech companies to develop microbes as products microbes as inputs into agriculture systems to carry out these beneficial activities. The rapidly growing agricultural microbial biologicals market can be challenging to navigate because there's so many products with so many different activities coming from so many different sources. To categorize some of these, we can split these products into source material. For example, a microbial product versus a natural product. A microbial product is a living organism as the product, as the input. Um, a natural product is some naturally occurring compound that was produced by a living thing, but not the living thing itself. We can also categorize biological amendments by their activity. A biostimulant is a substance or a microorganism that when applied to seeds, plants, or the rhizosphere, stimulates natural processes to enhance or benefit nutrient uptake, nutrient efficiency, tolerance to abiotic stress, or crop quality and yield. A biopesticide includes naturally occurring substances that control pests, biochemical pesticides, microorganisms that control pests, microbial pesticides, and pesticidal substances produced by plants containing added genetic material, plant incorporated protectants, or PIPs. In summary, biological products can be microbial, comprised of living organisms, or natural products derived from living organisms. In addition to having different activities, one important difference between biostimulants and biopesticides is regulatory oversight. Biopesticides are regulated by the EPA, while biostimulants have little regulation. These products are typically registered at the state level, similar to fertilizers. 
This lack of regulation certainly contributes to challenges in navigating the expanding biostimulant market. So all of these microbial products and biological amendments are really promising solutions for supporting sustainable agricultural production in reducing synthetic fertilizer inputs, in reducing water use, in protecting plants from disease pressures, and also from abiotic stressors such as increased extreme climate events and other environmental stressors that are becoming more prevalent due to climate change. However, while promising, the challenge is in scaling up these tiny microbes and the interactions that they provide at small, small scales across fields and regions and nations. Scale-up challenges include intrinsic variables such as the product viability and stability, what formulation the product is in, if it is a seed treatment or a soil amendment or a foliar application. Um, there are also many variables related to how that particular biological product may interact with different crops and different varieties of crops. And then certainly how that product performs across diverse environmental production zones, different environmental regions, climate regions, um, and also importantly, within the context of the diverse microbial communities that are living in our agricultural soils.